The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You will recall last week the readings that we had were on the need to pray always and not to lose hope. If you recall that gospel from last weekend, it ended with what I would say is one of the most chilling questions from the Lord that we could possibly hear in the scriptures. When the Son of Man returns, will there be faith on earth? Today's gospel, also on prayer, ends with probably the opposite, the most hopeful line in scripture. And he, the tax collector, went back to his home justified. By reading these two parables together, we are instructed to pray with the determination of the widow that we heard in last week's gospel and to have the humility of the tax collector. In today's gospel, we have two people who enter the temple to pray. One, the Pharisee is stereotypically righteous. The other, the tax collector, is stereotypically unrighteous. Fer the Pharisee prays with pride, with arrogance, with self-righteousness. In his prayer, he focuses on himself, not on God. He trusts in himself, is absorbed in his own virtue, and is blind to his real position before God. The Pharisee asks nothing of God in his prayer because he presumes he is not a sinner. He gives no evidence of humility, and because he doesn't think he's a sinner, no evidence of contrition. The tax collector prays with absolute humility. Fully aware of his faults, he focuses on God's mercy. He beats his breast and says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And the gospel says he went home justified, righteous, vindicated before God. The one who is so acutely aware of his sins is made righteous, is justified. And how was he justified? He was aware of those sins and he repented, showed contrition. He stood in the truth of his faults, his failings, the times he had sinned, and he repented. But in spite of his sinfulness, he was deeply aware of the depth of the Father's love for him. He was sorry, 
and sought the Lord's mercy. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. This is why we begin Mass every single time, calling to mind our faults, our failings, the times we have sinned, and then say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. And then we contritely beat our breast, just like the tax collector, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. The Pharisee trusts in his own righteousness and thus regards others with contempt. Those who treat others with contempt cannot bring themselves to rely on God's grace. And therefore, those who exalt themselves over others and boast of their virtue before God will discover that they have cut themselves off both from virtue and from God. Those who are aware of their need for grace, for repentance and forgiveness will not be able to despise other people. It's only the merciful who can receive mercy and only those who forgive who will be forgiven. That is what the final words of today's gospel really mean. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. It could just as easily read, whoever is proud, arrogant, self-righteous, who treats others with contempt will be humbled. But whoever is aware of their sins, their need for grace, for repentance, for forgiveness will be exalted. The entire point of religion is to make us humble before God, therefore opening us up to the path of love. As the first reading so beautifully said, the prayers of the humble pierce the clouds. In this past Friday's daily Mass reading, we read from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, and it makes exactly the same point. St. Paul said, I, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The path of unity comes from the, a particular way of living. It's a unity that bears fruit, whether it is in family life, amongst couples, amongst co-workers, amongst parishioners, amongst the community at large. And so what leads to that unity? What leads to that peace? The key attribute is humility. It leads, as St. Paul said, to gentleness and to patience. These three things, humility, gentleness, and patience, are the opposite of what we see when we see the opposite of humility, when we see pride. The proud, arrogant, self-righteous, the Pharisees among us, are generally not gentle. The proud person tends to be impatient with others. The perfect test of humility is by asking, am I gentle? Am I patient with that person? In my thoughts, in my words, in my actions. St. Paul really gives us a roadmap to examine our own conscience with each relationship we have. When we are not practicing gentleness and patience, it's because we're not humble with that particular person, and that usually leads to division and a lack of harmony. We are not living out, as St. Paul calls it, the bond of peace. Humility is only seen in gentleness and patience. So back to that chilling question from last week's Gospel. When the Son of Man returns, will there be faith on earth? The Gospel's answer is very clear in today's Gospel. The answer is a resounding yes. A resounding yes for the humble, for the gentle, for patient sinners who acknowledge their sins and repent of them. Like the tax collector, they are the ones who will be justified. The prayers of the humble pierce the clouds.